asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. So you know by now that basically claims have been made that Cambridge Analytica used data to influence the referendum, the European Union in-out referendum in 2016. But not only that, while that's going on, others are saying that Vote Leave broke spending rules on the referendum. The result itself is tainted and a number of people are calling for the result to be basically cast aside and for the whole process to start again. Caroline Lucas, the Green Party MP, is one of them, but she doesn't call for a second referendum here today, but she does ask a question of Theresa May about the Cambridge Analytica story, and she uses some choice words about our society. And again, I'm having one of those nights, it's like a Monday, but it's not a Monday. Let me try that again. This is Caroline Lucas putting a question to Theresa May at PMQs today. Caroline Lucas will be heard. Caroline Lucas, we're grateful. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. He's some dickhead, Berko, isn't he? Huh? Huh? Caroline Lucas will be heard. Caroline Lucas will be heard. Caroline Virtue signalling Muppet, eh? Caroline Lucas, we're grateful. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Cambridge Analytica revelation suggests that there is something rotten in the state of our democracy. Yeah. The current electoral law is woefully inadequate. There's something rotten in the state of our democracy. And ironically, all the backbenchers, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's us she's talking about, dear boy. Anyway, she goes on. But at dealing with the combination of big money and big data. So will the Prime Minister commit to urgent cross-party talks to kick-start a process to ensure that we have a regulatory and legal framework that is up to the challenge of dealing with the digital age? Yeah. Can I say to the Honourable Lady, as I've said previously, clearly the allegations relating to Cambridge Analytica are concerning because people should be able to have confidence about how their personal data is, uh, is being used. I think it's right that what we're seeing is the Information Commissioner investigating this matter. I expect Facebook, Cambridge Analytica and any other others involved to cooperate fully with the Information Commissioner's Office in that uh, uh, investigation that is taking place. And our Data Protection Bill, as I said earlier, will strengthen the powers of the Information Commissioner, but it will also strengthen legislation around data protection, um, as, will, as will the other steps the Government has taken through, for example, our Digital Charter. This is a government that is committing to making sure that this is a safe place to be online. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a government that's committed to making sure that the bait is shut down online, that opinions that offend the establishment and call into question who these people are must be shut down. That's what they're going to use this Cambridge Analytica story for. There's no doubt about that. As well as other things like calling into account the legitimacy of certain elections. Crazy. Right, that was Caroline Lucas. What else have we got for you today? Well, the anti-Semitism thing and Labour, there wasn't so much of it today. I still can't um, find out whether or not Jeremy Corbyn has had his offer to meet with various Jewish leaders in the country. Has he had his offer uh, accepted? This was the thing, you see. Corbyn was running cap in hand, wasn't he? Um, saying that, um, you know, it was no longer acceptable for people to say that the behaviour of the of the uh, Israeli government was comparable to the behaviour of the Nazis. And we couldn't talk about Zionism anymore. Corbyn accepted all of this as he um, collapsed, capitulated, whatever you want to say, in front of the uh, Zionists. Well, there's a load of articles in the paper today. Michael Segalov writing in The Guardian saying, if you can't see anti-Semitism, it's time to open your eyes. What a load of bollocks. Um, there's an Evening Standard story today that says David Lammy has been uh, threatened um, with deselection over uh, a Labour anti-Semitism uh, rally. Um, some left-wing members of the Tottenham Labour Party have said that Lamy stabbed them in the back by supporting the Jewish Board of Deputies demonstration outside Parliament. Um, so, 
some Labour supporters are pissed off that the party has fallen over and bent backwards to acquiesce to the Zionist lobby and some of them are threatening their MPs like David Lammy. Um, you'll know David Lammy, of course. There aren't too many black MPs. He's one of them. And he's a, a Tottenham MP and his party members locally are saying, can't believe that you're going along with this garbage. So, you know, we're going to do what we can to deselect you at the next um, the next opportunity. And of course, they're being accused of anti-Semitism as well. Now, the Independent Online, it's, it's not in print anymore, um, they're reporting this evening, only in the last couple of hours, that the Jewish community leaders that Jeremy Corbyn wants to meet with, they've said they will only meet him so long as he agrees with their preconditions. Who the fuck is really running this country? You see what, what we've been talking about this on programmes now for over 10 years. Who's running the joint? Corbyn, it's not enough. It's not enough that Corbyn has 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 laid face down in front of them and put his mouth on their shoes. That's not good enough. They want to humiliate him now and they want him to say certain things in public before they'll agree to meet him. And you know what that bearded, elbow patch wearing tweed jacket fuckwit is going to do? He's going to do what he's told. I'm sorry for the profanity, but it's an outrage to me. No, we won't meet you until you agree to certain preconditions. Well, fuck off then. How about that? Prove there's anti-Semitism in this country. Prove that it's everywhere. Prove that you've only got to open your eyes to see it. And if you can prove that to me, I'm a decent bloke. I'll agree with it and I'll take steps to stop it or at least to challenge it. But of course it's all lies. Massive lies. I wonder will Corbyn... No, of course he won't. What an idiot. Talk about naivety, huh? I was just about to say, I wonder will Corbyn have the balls. Um, Corbyn has no balls. So he's not going to tell them anything. He's certainly not going to tell them where to go. Anyway, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. I know. He was speaking to Sky News today and he couldn't wait to weigh in on this anti-Semitism row and he couldn't wait to get stuck in to the virtue signalling. So, um, your own party have had uh, some... This is Faisal Islam, the presenter, interviewing Sadiq Khan, who you'll hear next. Some serious issues over the past few days. Is the Labour leadership, is Jeremy Corbyn doing enough about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party? The Labour Party is not doing enough about anti-Semitism. Uh, we need to take tough action. Racism is racism. And there should be no hierarchy when it comes to racism. Uh, I speak to many Londoners of Jewish faith uh, who tell me how disappointed they are that they don't feel welcome in the Labour Party. Uh, they think that some of the allegations uh, that have been made against members should be taken far more seriously, should be investigated far more quickly. Uh, and I'm hoping the Labour Party will swiftly investigate allegations against individual members and take decisive action. Yeah, Sadiq Khan there, a bit of virtue signalling Sadiq Khan. We're going to leave that alone. We've done a lot on anti-Semitism this week, maybe more than we should have in terms of, I know it gets repetitive at times, but it's quite staggering, as I said to me, that we have this situation and we have politicians and journalists running as fast as they can to get to a microphone to declare their love and their obeisance for the Zionist lobby in this country. It's madness.